there's something really satisfying about getting your app to look great on your device. But just because there's over 11,000 other Android devices out there doesn't mean you need to build 11,000 other layouts to make a great looking app. Not if you're using responsive UI principles. You may have noticed that I'm not Ian or Joanna. My name is Mike Denny, a design advocate on the Google design team. First things first, thinking about specific phones and tablets is only going to get you into trouble. There's a wide spectrum of devices and not that much difference between the largest phone and the smallest tablet. Instead, think more generally about how much space you have to work with. This can come in three different flavors, width, height, and smallest width. Width is super important and should be the basis for breakpoints in designing and building your UI. For example, 600 dp in width is the first point where you could consider having a side-by-side -side summary and detail level view. Any lower and you won't be giving each level a full attention it deserves. Height is less common when designing a responsive UI, but keep in mind that something like a vertically scrolling container is going to be difficult to use if you can only see one or two elements at a time due to a constrained height. Smallest width, unlike height or width, is designed to be rotation insensitive as it's just the smaller of the two values. This gives you a better idea of how much space is available and is an easy way to ensure that your app remains consistent as the device is rotated. You don't want to force your user to relearn your navigation structure every time they rotate their device. This is particularly important in the multi-window world. When your app is resized, your width, height, and smallest width are going to be updated. You might be going from full screen on a tablet down to what amounts to a portrait-oriented phone worth of space. Here's where a good responsive UI can make for a smooth transition. There are a number of common patterns you might consider when building that responsive UI, such as revealing previously hidden content as the screen size grows, transforming your navigation pattern or switching from a list to a grid, dividing your screen into multiple sections side by side, reflowing specific elements, expanding the size or margins of individual elements, or even changing the position of specific elements like a floating action button. Check out the blog post for more details on designing a responsive UI and specific patterns you can use to build better apps. Music